at some point, if you haven't uh, already experienced this, you are going to need to send some footage to a, an editor that is only working on uh, a Mac computer and using Final Cut Pro or Final Cut Pro X. And um, sometimes it's easy because the uh, editor is knowledgeable about uh, bringing in footage from other systems. But for the most part, editors using Final Cut Pro live in another universe of some kind and uh, believe that everybody editing video must be working on a Mac and um, that's the only thing that they know. And if you ask them, you know, have they installed other codecs to work with, they'll say something like, well, what's a codec? Isn't everything ProRes video? And so it can be uh, somewhat challenging at times to work with uh, Apple editors. But uh, Edia 6.5 has made it uh, a little bit easier, at least one step easier. Let's take a look at some of the options. Let's uh, open up program here. Now, even if you are working with an older version of Edius, there are ways that you can export and send footage to Apple editors in a way that they will be able to utilize even without installing any codecs. Uh, let's just do an in and out of our flower shot here and uh, hit F11 for your export options. You print to file. Well, first of all, we should say that in communicating with your editor, you might ask them what kind of cameras they're working with and are they working with any of this camera footage natively. Somewhere along the line, they may have installed uh, a codec to work with their, say, their XD cam uh, camera, and you might be able to just choose one of these options and it'll work for them. But uh, perhaps a safer way is to go to the QuickTime. Uh, if you're working with an older version of Edius, and choose the uh, default QuickTime editor, hit export, and then before you uh, just give it a name and hit save, go to settings. Let's make a few changes here. Let's uncheck uh, fast start. Let's go up to settings, and let's change this to the best setting, and change it to best quality, and hit OK. And with those changes made, you can give your clip a name. Oh, first of all, maybe choose to send this somewhere else. And using this QuickTime exporter uh, on the multi-pass setting, it, it does take a little bit longer, but the quality is just a little better. You will end up giving your Apple editor a file that they will be able to place on their timeline and they might not be able to play it in real time. They might have to actually render it, uh, depending, again, on what kind of codecs that they may have installed. But at least, because it's a QuickTime H.264 file, their Final Cut system will play it. Uh, it might, like I say, require a little bit of rendering for them. I believe that the uh, latest version of Final Cut, Final Cut Pro X, uh, will play this without rendering, you know, without installing any codec. So, you know, if your guy is saying, well, what's a codec and why should I install that and why do I need to install something? Well, here's a file format that they should be able to just place on their timeline and, and work with without any installation of, of any codecs. Okay, but EDIA 6.5 offers a new option. Let's hit our F11 key again. Go to our print to file options. Now here under QuickTime, you'll see uh, in EDIA 6.5, there's a couple of new options. One is Grass Valley HQ and Grass Valley HQX. And what this is, is a special codec that will give your uh, Apple editor a MOV file and it will be a file that is as robust as uh, the Grass Valley HQ AVI files. And it is a file that will play on Final Cut Pro X natively. The little catch is that your editor is going to have to go to Grass Valley website, actually create a, an account, and uh, download a Grass Valley codec and install it on their computer. So there is a little bit of a catch here, and some of your people may not be too crazy about going through the steps for that. But if you can encourage them to do that, not only will they be able to play your footage natively, in real time, without any rendering, they will now have installed on their computer a beautiful codec that they will be able to use for you know, the lifetime of their 
installation. And uh, other uh, Grass Valley editors can now send them footage and they can play it natively. Grass Valley, uh, Edius, is actually becoming more and more popular even among uh, Apple users. When Apple decided to go to Final Cut Pro X and uh, abandon the upgrades on the other, and the first versions of Final Cut Pro X were so elementary, a lot of uh, Apple editors actually went to edit. So it's becoming more popular even within the Apple field. There's a lot of broadcast stations that have just uh, installed everything uh, in Grass Valley, and so it is becoming a a more worldwide recognized uh, system and it would be good for them to install these codecs anyway. Okay, with that, that little speech, uh, maybe you can encourage them with uh, that information. Let's go ahead and export our footage. And uh, if you're working in an 8-bit uh, project, then you'll choose the Grass Valley HQ. If you're working in a 10-bit project, choose the Grass Valley HQX. And uh, this particular project is 10-bit, so we'll choose that. And up here, I like to choose, just go with the HQX Superfine, and uh, let's hit export. And give it a name. All right, so now, let's just for fun compare those files. Now the first thing that you might notice as you uh, examine these in Windows Explorer is that the original method produces a file that has an actual PyCon that you can see in Windows Explorer. The other one does not. And the first time you look at that, you might well wonder, did it work? Uh, <laughs> Can we actually send that to somebody? Will they be able to play it? Well, you can see that uh, in your bin it showed up fine, and if we play it, it plays fine. There's nothing wrong with the file. It's just not something that Windows uh, Explorer can actually read and, and create a thumbnail for, so don't worry about that. If you wanted to just uh, assure yourself, what you could do is uh, just right-click on it and, and go down to Open With, choose your QuickTime Player, and have the QuickTime player show it to you and confirm for you that it, indeed it did work and it plays fine. Now the other thing that you might want to notice and compare uh, between these two options, go down to details and notice the difference in file size. It's the exact same length, exact same footage. The first method that we chose to do is around 81,000 or 82,000 uh, kilobits compared to this 10-bit HQX file that we created, you'll notice that it's 557,000 kilobits or kilobytes. And uh, so you can see that it's a much more robust file that you're sending them if you can uh, choose this second option. Again, the trick is that you need to get your Apple editor to agree to go to the Grass Valley website in order to download the software that he needs, or the codecs that he needs in order to read that file and play it on his system. Now, where do you find that uh, free codec? Well, here it is here. If you go to the uh, Grass Valley website, go to the section on um, Edius Pro 6.5 uh, and look down here for this option here, get the free HQX HQ codec for the Max and click on it. Now this little area here kind of rotates, so the first time you go to that section, let's just go back, the first time you go to that section on Edius Pro 6.5, you might see something else down there, like download the free 31-day trial. But if you wait for it, um, it will change to other options, and one of them will be uh, this free codec that you can download. I wish they made it a little bit easier to find. I've tried searching, you know, uh, under codecs, I've tried free codecs, I've tried Apple codecs, and, you know, we just don't get any hits on this. Keep waiting for it, it'll come around. Here it is here. Get the free HQX HQ codec for Mac OS. Click on that, and uh, that will take you to the download page. Now, if you have not signed in, there might be one step before you get to this download page. You might have to actually either log into your account or create an account. As of uh, the recording of this tutorial in July of uh, 2013, Grass Valley does require people to actually sign up for an account in order to download the free codec. 
And uh, you know, some people might say, well, why do you have to sign up Grass Valley? Are they trying to harvest emails and sell their stuff and, and promote? Well, I, I can't remember ever getting spam email from Grass Valley. I believe it's very legitimate. They're just getting your email information, perhaps in case they upgrade or update the uh, codec and, and want to let people know that there's a, a, a later version to download. They can uh, send people an email for that. So uh, after they sign up for an account, uh, they'll be able to get to this page here and hit the download button and get that codec. And uh, to make it easier for your client or your friend uh, to get to this page, you could maybe just go up here, grab this link up here, and send that to them in an email. And they'll be taken probably first of all to that registration page where they sign up for an account but then very easily get to this page to download this codec. And uh, then they will be good to go. They'll be able to take your footage or any other Grass Valley footage, place it on their timeline, and play the beautiful Grass Valley codec on their timeline in real time. All right, well, I believe that that does it for exporting for Final Cut Pro X.